If you're like me, you do not like installing Postgres databases on your computer. For one, it creates a Postgres user, which is kind of weird. And number two, it's kind of hard to start and stop the Postgres database. That's why I like to use a Docker container to create a Postgres container that I can use for all my development. So here's how we do it. First, I'm gonna show you the directory. So we have two files, postgres.yaml and Postgres underscore data. Postgres underscore data is actually a directory. You can see it with the D in the, on the far left. Now that is the directory where I'm gonna have the Postgres database save all the data. When you create a Docker container, it's kind of ephemeral. In other words, it's when it's up, it's, it's around, but when you shut it down, it loses all the information inside it, unless you use an external uh, directory to store that data. And you'll see that in the postgres.yaml file. All right, so in the postgres.yaml file, that's what you use to create the Docker container. We're gonna check that out. All right, so here's the YAML file to create Postgres Docker container. And it's really simple. You don't have to install anything because it's using the official Docker Postgres image. All right, this is just my version. All right, here is the image that it uses. It just gets the latest official Postgres Docker image, downloads that when it builds it. All right, here's the container name. Now this is just the name that you can choose. These names have to be unique in your Docker containers. In other words, two Docker containers can't be called Postgres example. All right, now this is the environment. This is where you might, on your computer, have uh, different paths or different uh, environment variables. In this case, we use it to change the Postgres password. Postgres has a default password, but you know that's not very secure. Also, example is not the most secure either, so definitely change this to so something that would be appropriate. Volumes, like I said, if you want the data to stay around when the Docker container is stopped, you'll need a folder on your computer and you'll need to map it. In this case, like I showed you, Postgres data is the local di directory. This is the directory inside the Docker container. That's where Docker would normally store its data. So that is mapped to Postgres underscore data. And the ports. Postgres has a default port. That port is 5432, but that is inside the container. We're using ports to map that port to our localhost port. That way we can get to it easy from our computers. With that, let's go on to build the Docker container. So this is assuming that Docker is installed on your computer and docker-compose is also installed, at least on the Mac that installs by default. Dash F is because I'm using a non-standard name for the file, for the YAML file. And then let's build it. Shouldn't take too long because a Postgres container is not that big. Postgres uses an image skipping. Oh, we don't even have to build it. It's just that easy. All right, I thought I had to build it, but I think I just have to do postgres.yaml up. All right, so here's where it's actually pulling it. Oh yeah, look at it, look at it move. And it is up. Database system is ready to accept connections. Let's move over to, I just opened a different window and let's show you the, a few things. So we can go Docker PS, which lists all the current containers that are up. You can see that Postgres container is up. You can see the container ID and you can see the port that it's at. So if I wanted to connect with it, one of the ways, a common way to connect with Postgres is with PSQL. In this case, it's that's already installed on my system. You can use other things, other ways to connect to it. You can use Postgres admin or something like that, or you can connect to it with, with a Python package. Anyway, I'm gonna use PSQL. All right, so PSQL dash H. Uh, so we saw it was 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to connect to it. 
that's the host, and then dash p is the port, 5432, and then dash user is the default Postgres. You have the password in this case as example, and you notice we are in Postgres. So we can do a standard Postgres command and list the databases. And those are the databases that are there. So I can quit out of here. And then if we want to shut it down safely, docker pose dash f and it will do a safe shutdown of your Postgres Docker container. And you can see here, and it is done. And if we look at docker-ps, you notice there's nothing left. So everything's shut down and nothing else to clean up. And we're in, we're in business, piece of cake, party time, tell all your friends and family.